Welcome back to Quantum Quest, where we explore the most mind-bending possibilities of science, consciousness, and the cosmos. Today, we're traveling to a world that challenges everything you think you know about human nature. A world where lying is not just wrong, it's biologically impossible. This is the story of Viridian, the planet where truth became the only language. Deep in a region astronomers call the Quiet Swath, orbiting a calm G-type star much like our own Sun, lies a planet officially cataloged as HD 4192b. But when the first human explorers gazed upon its shimmering atmosphere and bioluminescent oceans, they gave it a different name, Viridion. The world of the true, picture this, Forests of green gold vegetation stretching across continents. Oceans filled with plankton that glow like living stars, turning the night into a canvas of floating constellations. From orbit, it looked like paradise. A second Earth, untouched and pristine. But what made Viridian truly extraordinary wasn't the landscape. It was the people. Dr. Elena Marin was a behavioral biologist who had spent 20 years studying deception in Earth's animal kingdom. She understood how octopi change color to deceive predators, how birds fake injuries to protect their nests, how primates manipulate each other through body language and social hierarchies. Deception, she knew, was written into the DNA of survival itself. So when she joined the Viridian expedition, she expected to find more of the same. More creatures lying, hiding, surviving through misdirection. She never expected to discover a species where deception never evolved at all. The Viridians emerged from the forest the moment the human ship touched down. They were tall and graceful, standing nearly seven feet with elongated skulls and skin that looked like polished quartz. But as they moved closer, the crew noticed something extraordinary. Their skin was glowing, not reflecting light, generating it. Complex patterns of bioluminescent colors rippled across their bodies in waves. Spirals of amber, pulses of blue, gentle washes of green. Each pattern was unique. Each one shifted and changed with every thought, every feeling, every intention. Elena's breath caught in her throat. She'd studied communication systems her entire career. But this was something else entirely. The Viridians didn't speak. They didn't need to. Their neural lattice, a glowing network visible beneath their translucent skin, was directly connected to their outer layer. Every emotion, every thought, every intention was broadcast as light. There was no translation layer. No room for misinterpretation. No possibility of hiding what you really felt. A Viridian could no more lie than they could stop their own heartbeat. Elena felt a strange mixture of awe and terror wash over her. In a world where every feeling was visible, where every thought was transparent, what did privacy even mean? The Viridian who approached the human crew first introduced himself through the neural translator device as Azeros. His skin shimmered in warm spirals of amber, the Viridian signal for curiosity, welcome, and openness. But when the humans tried to speak to him, something strange happened. Every time someone used words, Azeros' skin flashed in rapid bursts of analytical blue. The other Viridians nearby did the same. They were trying to understand verbal communication, but to them, spoken language looked completely alien. Think about it from their perspective. They'd spent millions of years communicating with perfect clarity. Every interaction was honest by default. And now these strange beings arrive using sounds that had no visible connection to their internal states. To the Viridians, human speech looked like a system specifically designed for distortion. Over the following weeks, Elena and her team learned the evolutionary history of the Viridians. Millions of years ago, their ancestors developed a mutation. 
a neural skin interface that allowed their nervous system to broadcast emotional states as light. At first, it was simple. Red for danger, green for safety, blue for calm. But as their brains grew more complex, so did the patterns. Eventually, their entire consciousness became visible. And it gave them an incredible evolutionary advantage. During group hunts, they could coordinate instantly without sound. No prey would hear them coming. In their tribes, deep emotional bonding happened naturally because nothing was hidden. Fear, affection, anger, joy, everything was shared immediately. Deception became not only useless, but actively harmful. Any Viridian who tried to suppress their emotional output experienced painful neural inflammation. Their own bodies punished dishonesty at the biological level. Now compare that to humans. We evolved the exact opposite ability. Our ancestors who survived were the ones who could hide fear from predators, mask weakness from rivals, and suppress emotions to maintain social bonds. We developed elaborate systems of deception because in the environments we evolved in, sometimes the truth got you killed. The Viridians couldn't comprehend it. One evening, standing on a cliff overlooking the glowing ocean, Elena tried to explain lying to Azeros. She described how humans lie to protect themselves, to avoid conflict, to gain advantages, how children learn to hide their feelings to escape punishment. How adults use what we call white lies to keep relationships smooth. She explained that sometimes we deceive people we love specifically because we love them. As she spoke, Azeros' skin pulsed in slow, spiraling waves of deep violet, the viridian signal for profound sorrow. When Elena finished, Azeros was quiet for a long moment. Then he spoke through the translator, his voice carrying the weight of genuine grief. Your species was born inside of shadows. You have been carrying them for so long you mistake them for warmth. Elena stood there, speechless. The words hit her like a physical blow. Because deep down, she knew he was right. Something began to change in the human crew during their time on Viridian. The Viridian's pure transparency made secrecy feel suffocating. In a world where everyone around you was completely honest, hiding your own truth felt like carrying a weight that grew heavier each day. Elena found herself opening up about things she'd never told anyone, her insecurities about her work, the guilt she carried from past relationships, the grief she'd never properly processed after her father's death. And the strange thing? It felt natural, like the world itself encouraged honesty, like Viridion was gently scrubbing her mind clean of all the accumulated shadows. But the transformation wasn't one-sided. The Viridians became fascinated by human deception. Not attracted to it, they found it disturbing but intellectually captivated in the way we might study a dangerous predator. They ask endless questions. Why does your vocal tone change when you pretend to agree but feel disagreement? Why do your eyes move differently when your heart contradicts your words? Why do you create sounds that your body says are false? Azeros was particularly troubled by one aspect of human behavior. One day, he asked Elena a question that would haunt her for years. Does deception harm you? Elena hesitated. Every instinct told her to deflect, to give a diplomatic answer. But standing there, surrounded by beings who couldn't lie, the truth came out. Yes, she said quietly, more than we admit. Azeros' entire body brightened in a flare of pure white, the viridian signal for shock and revelation then why do you keep it? Elena felt something break open inside her chest. The answer was so simple, so devastating, because we don't know how to live without it. Azeros lowered his head. The glow dimmed to a soft, sad blue. You haven't yet learned to trust your own light. Think about what Viridian society looked like without deception. 
no crimes of manipulation, no jealousy born from suspicion, no political propaganda or advertising designed to mislead, no social masks worn to impress others. Their conflicts were biological. Hunger, storms, natural disasters, never emotional warfare. Their relationships formed through perfect clarity. You knew exactly how someone felt about you, always. Their leaders were chosen because their emotional patterns proved stable and consistent over time. Their children grew up never fearing judgment for feeling what they felt. It wasn't a naive paradise. They had challenges, loss, pain, disagreement, but not the kind of suffering humans create for ourselves through lies, manipulation, and hidden agendas. They had discovered something humans have been searching for since the beginning of civilization, a society built on complete trust. When the time came for the human crew to leave Viridian, something remarkable happened. Azeros and dozens of other Viridians gathered near the ship. Their bodies glowed in elaborate, intertwining light patterns, waves of gratitude, farewell, and hope flowing between them like a symphony made of pure emotion. But one signal shone stronger than all the others, a shimmering resonance of gold and pink that Elena had never seen before. The neural translator identified it, longing. Not just sadness at departure, but a deep, aching wish that things could be different. That these two species, so fundamentally different in how they communicated truth, could somehow bridge the gap. Azaro stepped close to Elena one final time. His light softened into a gentle, steady green, pure sincerity. Take this with you, he said. Your species may not shine as we do. But you can choose clarity. You can choose truth. His patterns shifted, became more intense. Do not let the shadows become your home. Elena felt tears streaming down her face. She'd spent her entire career studying deception as an evolutionary advantage. But standing there in the light of a being who had never known a lie, she understood that deception wasn't an advantage. It was a wound we'd never learned to heal. When the expedition returned to Earth, Elena published a groundbreaking report, The Viridian Hypothesis, How the Absence of Deception Shapes Intelligence, Society, and Emotion. It didn't just present data. It asked a question that shook the scientific community and eventually the world. What if the way we've been living isn't inevitable? What if deception isn't a necessary part of human nature, but a habit we can choose to break? The response was explosive. Therapists began using Viridian communication principles in their practice, encouraging radical honesty in safe spaces. Neuroscientists studied the neural inflammation response, discovering that humans actually do experience subtle physiological stress when lying. We just learn to ignore it. Educational systems started teaching emotional literacy differently, helping children understand and express their feelings rather than hide them. Some communities even developed wearable emotional light devices inspired by Viridian biology, not to force transparency, but to help people who struggle to communicate their feelings find a voice. Viridian didn't just expand our scientific understanding of intelligence and evolution. It redefined what it meant to be human. It showed us that the shadows we carry aren't permanent. That transparency isn't weakness, it's courage. That a world built on truth isn't naive, it's possible. Five years later, Elena returned to Viridian for a second expedition. As her ship descended through the shimmering atmosphere, she felt different than she had the first time. Lighter, clearer. The years since the first contact had changed her, she'd learned to recognize the shadows she carried and, one by one, let them go. When the ship landed, Azeros was waiting on the shore. His skin glowed warm gold, 
joy, recognition, welcome. And as Elena stepped down onto the bioluminescent sand, she realized something profound. For the first time in her life, she felt no shadows within herself, only light. The Viridians taught us something remarkable. They showed us that lying isn't an inevitable part of intelligence. It's just one path evolution can take. And if we evolve to carry shadows, we can also evolve to let them go. Thanks for joining us on Quantum Quest. If this story made you think differently about honesty, communication, or what it means to be human, leave a comment below. Have you ever wished you could communicate without the possibility of misunderstanding? What would change in your life if everyone could see exactly what you felt? Hit that subscribe button for more explorations into the strange, the profound, and the possible. Until next time, keep questioning.